Hey everybody, welcome to the next devlog about a casual RPG building game I'm making, inspired by games like Stardew Valley and Minecraft combined together. Now in the last video, I covered the process of creating the core building system for the game, and that allows you to place various different types of blocks all around the world and create these levels and in them build whatever you like using voxels. Now I designed the building system so far using raycasting. And that basically worked by casting a point when you clicked your mouse and then casting another point when you let go. Now that worked okay for some scenarios, but when you were building on different levels, if you were to hover your mouse off the edge of a raised platform, all of a sudden the ray cast when you release your mouse would be off in the distance in the world. And that would throw out the block calculations completely and you would end up with these random lines of blocks when you only intended to, to place a small number. And that was really frustrating to use. So to me, that was one of the biggest things I had to address. So that's where I started out. Now this was quite a big undertaking as I had to go through and refactor all of the block placement code that at this point had become quite complex. Now as I work on this game purely in my free time, I am sometimes a bit creative with when I work on the game, such as illustrated by this comment here. So I really had my work cut out for me in going back through and refactoring this. Now after some thinking and design, I decided to try and go with a screen-based control system as opposed to relying on the world space. What I mean by that is rather than casting rays into the world and getting a 3D position, instead I'm just relying on a 2D coordinate from the mouse position. And because the camera is at a fixed angle, I can use that to calculate where the player is trying to place the blocks. Now there's still a lot of room for improvement in this system, there's a lot of interpretation that you have to do uh, in terms of trying to figure out where the player is actually trying to place the blocks and trying to improve that and refine it is quite challenging but it's definitely better than it was and for now I want to move on to some of the other features and come back to the building system in the future so I'm going to park it and I'm going to move on. Now at this point in development, I'd recently moved house. One of the first things I did after moving was publish my first devlog. That had been online now for a few weeks at this point and had began to get quite a bit of traction. Far more in fact than I ever thought it would. And for that, I thank everybody who watched and interacted with the video. It means everything to me. Going from working alone on this idea in isolation to sharing it with the world and actually having some positive reception has really helped make this feel more real. And I'm really excited to continue developing this and also to document the journey. So again, thank you. Anyway, on with the development. Until now, the game had mostly been about placing blocks. I wanted to add a lot more life to the game, so I started by adding objects. So I worked on a placeable object system, which wasn't too hard to add. I temporarily added some free assets from the Unity Asset Store, and quite soon I had a working object placement system, which I was quite happy with. And at some point in the near future, I will go back and remodel my own assets. But for now, I'm gonna just stick with these for development. Now, as I was expanding functionality, there was one problem that was becoming more and more apparent, and that was the inventory system. Until now, it'd just been a temporary system I'd thrown together for the point of development. But as I was starting to add to this, I was just creating more and more technical debt for myself, so I thought it was time to redesign the system and come up with something a bit more permanent. Now, to design a good inventory system is quite an undertaking. There are many different ways to implement such systems, and there's a lot of functionality to consider. For example, how do you move items between an inventory and other containers? How do you activate or equip items? Do you have to drag it into a slot, or do you just click it? Do items take up one slot, regardless of weight and size, or do certain items take up more space? And how does it handle stackable items and non-stackable items? And how do you discard those items? When you've decided on the functionality, then there's the UI and the UX to think about. The look of the UI can have a big impact on the overall feel of the game. And whilst thinking about the UI, it's also very important to think about the overall user experience. To support all of this, you're also going to need a robust item system that can handle the different types of items with their unique behaviours. Okay, great, so where do I start? Well, my thinking was I'd start with some UI prototyping, try and see how it would look, how it could move around, how you could interact with it, and then get an idea for where I should take it from there. So, so that's where I started.
Now at this point I'd iterated through a few different designs and I just couldn't seem to find anything that I actually liked. All of them seemed too imposing and I actually found myself liking the old UI that I was trying to replace. So I had to take a step back at this point. I like to think of it as this was just me getting all of the bad stuff out of my system from all of the years where I've not been designing inventory systems. So I took a step back, had to think about it and try to approach it from a different angle. Now generally when I'm struggling with something creative, I like to take a step back and try and find inspiration from somewhere else. In this case, I think UI is akin to great architecture. I think there are many parallels between them. For example, it's important that the main features aren't overcrowded. Placement is also important so that the main features aren't obstructed from view. And I'm also a fan of functional architecture, where the look of the building is actually heavily influenced by the building's function. Now, I think Terraria is a good example of a game that does this well. From a graphical perspective, the inventory UI is quite minimalistic, but it's also very well designed and highly functional. I also like the fact that it's slightly transparent and doesn't have a flashy background. It's just very basic and easy to use. Now at this point it was time to start with the implementation. I started off by ironing out all of the requirements. As a wise man once said, without requirements or design, programming is the art of adding bugs to an empty text file. Now although I'm designing an inventory system, it's also important to think about how that will interact with other item containers. And also, can I reuse any of the logic across these different types of containers? For example, if I add chests or different bags or banks to the game. How do I transfer items between those containers? Now I decided to go for a pretty standard drag and drop interface where you could drag items from one container to the other and items would be stackable up to a certain limit and you could interact with these stacks by using different mouse buttons. To start the development, I actually started with test driven development or TD, whereby you write the tests for the code before you actually implement the functionality. An inventory system is a perfect example of when TDD can be beneficial as it helps you fully iron out the requirements for what you're trying to implement before you start writing the actual code. Now these unit tests really helped me to implement some of the early inventory functionality, but what I didn't factor in enough was the fact that I'm writing unit tests for Unity and not just a standard c -sharp library. Now whilst my unit tests were initially working, as things went on I realised that because of the nature of working with game objects as opposed to just creating new instances in the code, I would need to do a lot of refactoring and also a lot of learning on uh, unit testing in Unity before I would be to take this any further. And at this point I was very keen to actually get something implemented so I decided to just carry on without the unit tests. With the plan being in the future when I've learned more about automated testing in Unity I'll come back and I'll implement tests where necessary. Or at least that's the plan. Now the functionality at this point was progressing quite well but the graphics were falling behind and in particular the block icons didn't look great. Right now I was just using a 2D texture and I wanted to make this look a bit better as I add more items to the game. Now I did explore the idea of trying to draw up some stylized icons in Photoshop such as for the cubes but I soon realized this wasn't going to scale well. It was taking me quite a long time to create these cubes and even if I could get it down to just a few minutes I was going to have to do that for every item I added in the future and to me that just wasn't scalable. In software engineering tasks like this are known as toil. They are things that are repeated but also that could be automated. And part of my work as a software engineer is to reduce toil to a minimum so that you can instead focus your efforts on more valuable work. So that's what I set about doing. Now for this, I created a tool in Unity that will loop through all of the items in the object database and it'll instantiate them into the world, take a screenshot, save it as a PNG, and then continue looping. The nice thing about this is that you can stage the object to make it look as it does in the game. And now anytime I add a new object to the game, all I have to do is rerun this tool and it'll regenerate all of my icons for me. Now I could integrate this as part of loading the game and I have thought about doing that, but for now I'm just doing it myself. With icons implemented, I got to work on finishing the inventory functionality. Here I'm demoing what happens when you place an item in a slot that already has an item stack in it. Then I worked on how to actually discard items from the inventory. With that, most of the UI functionality was now implemented, so I thought it was time to start working on the usability and making it look better. I created some new placeholder buttons for some of the main UI actions. I say placeholder because I want to come back and redraw these when I have a final style for the game. Then I worked on improving the look and feel of the inventory. I also increased some of the sizing to make more of the items visible so that you didn't have to scroll down this small narrow window. I then worked on a feature where you could half a given stack size by right clicking on it. That meant that you could drag smaller quantities of items Items between different slots. And one of the last things I did was to make it so that the font color of an item will change based on the number of items in that stack. It's 
it's kind of a small nod to old school runescape whereby when you have a certain stack size the text will turn white or green i also added in the background a toggle for adding creative mode and normal mode so right now it's working in creative mode which is why the items in the main container aren't being removed when you drag them around but to show how that works with normal containers i've added a couple of extra containers here and i'm just dragging items between them all to show how this would work with other containers like bags chests maybe banks and, and other things in the main inventory window items are also categorized based on the object's metadata so that you can easily find different types of objects for example plants and blocks and perhaps special blocks like water and, and things like that now in the future i'll probably add the option to toggle this uh, categorization on or off so if you want to order things in a specific way you can now, overall, I'm really happy with how this has progressed. It's gone through quite a few iterations at this point, and it'll probably go through more in the future, but at some point you have to draw a line in the sand and say, okay, this is version one. It makes working with placing objects and blocks far nicer, and overall, with the improvements to the building system, I'm really happy with the overall improvements from this iteration. So and with that, I'm gonna wrap this video up. If you've got this far, thank you so much for watching. Please consider doing all of the usual stuff like liking the video and subscribing. It helps the channel a lot. I'm really trying to grow this as I document the progress. I'm gonna be making many more videos like this. So thank you everybody for your support and I'll see you next time.